Hello, I'm Peter Carter, director of the Climate Emergency Institute. And uh, today, the uh, United Nations Bonn uh, Climate Change Convention meeting has just finished on June the 16th. So it is my unpleasant duty and uh, with profound sadness that I'm going to report on what happened, the results from this meeting. And I've called it an unbelievably, abysmally bad Bonn United Nations Climate Change Convention meeting. There was incredible climate change denial all round throughout this Bonn meeting. And there was worse than no progress, and that's not unusual with uh, these meetings and conferences. The conferences are called the COPs. And this bond meeting was supposed to pave the way to the next United Nations conference, the COP27, at Egypt at the end of this year. And to do that in the shadow of the Glasgow uh, COP26 last year. And I say shadow because uh, that achieved nothing. And the mitigation plan that was presented on the last day was dramatically vetoed at the very last minute. So the, the countries ended up rejecting a proposal to phase out coal and rejecting a proposal to phase out fossil fuel subsidies. Bonn was a strategic exercise in denial and more fossil fuel favoring delay and distraction. The terrible reality of today is being totally denied, was totally denied at this Bonn meeting. And all that the Bonn meeting achieved was to sabotage the COP27 at the end of this year, because having achieved nothing after two weeks of uh, discussions and negotiations and panels and uh, committees, they will collect and they will collect together in Egypt and they will have to start everything from the beginning again. And uh, as was the case in Glasgow, they will have uh, barely enough time to get down to the important business of which is preventing global climate catastrophe, which is preventing the climate and oceans destruction collapse of the living biosphere. So it is now 30 years since countries agreed under the 1992 United Nations Climate Convention. They agreed and um, they are committed and required to control their greenhouse gas emissions to ensure a safe climate to in fact protect the climate for future generations, which was a, a quote from the convention. In 1992, global CO2 emissions were just over 22 billion metric tons. Last year, 2021, they were a record high of 36 billion tons. So that's an increase of 65% since nations signed the Climate Change Convention, protect the climate. Today, there is no agreement, not even a plan, to put emissions into decline. While under the world economy, the environmentally perverse economy of constant maximum economic growth, CO2 emissions are bound to keep increasing. Today, more fossil fuels than ever are being extracted and burn for energy, and that includes the worst of them all, coal. So Bonn was yet another meeting, an international meeting that refused to stop the rapid, rampant, wanton destruction of the sacred earth, Mother Earth, Mother Nature. They refused uh, to stay the fossil fuel carbon pollution death sentence of most life. I feel all kinds of emotions. I went over the media 
on this meeting and I had recently, um, as I uh, do uh, regularly, I had recently checked the atmospheric concentrations of the greenhouse gases and the global emissions of the greenhouse gases and I felt all kinds of emotions, uh, frustration, um, rage even, but really I feel most terribly ashamed because this is the dirty work of my generation. We uh, used to be called the uh, affluent generation and then we were called the uh, consumer culture, we were called the me generation, and now we are the annihilation generation. Uh, from media reports, I'm going to start with um, the most amazing media report. Um, the quote is to bridge the 1.5 degree C gap. And they say countries agree to a new work stream for action this decade. Now, um, uh, several uh, comments uh, on that. Another, yet another work stream. There have been many work streams, many work programs under over many decades. On this occasion at the Bonn meeting, the EU and the United States said the work stream should continue until 2030. Other groups of negotiating countries suggested they should, we should get the discussions done by the end of 2023. But the EU is saying, well, we're just going to keep uh, discussing our actions until 2030. And that's definitely a death sentence to uh, the planet, to the human race and most life on Earth. Now to the 1.5 degree C gap. This is absolutely incredible. The 1.5 degree C science fiction false delusion continues, even though the IPCC 6 assessment, Working Group 3 mitigation, which was published in April of this year, says, shows that 1.5 degree C will be reached, they said in the report, soon after 2030. And they showed and explained with graphs and charts that for a 1.5 degree C and a 2 degree C limit, global emissions were required to decline immediately. Now that word immediately was used several times for the first time in the sixth assessment. And as well as immediate, it had to be rapid. But at Bonn, Instead of talking emissions decline at all, Bonn reinforced this 1.5 degree C climate catastrophe conspiracy for more climate action delay. So um, this is almost universal, uh, apart again from uh, world-renowned climate expert James Hansen, who in his and two of his newsletters, which I received and I'd recommend to you, um, said that there's absolutely no way, scientifically impossible, to limit to 1.5 degrees C now. He called it BS, and it is. It's the worst scientific nonsense. As such, it's the greatest scandalization of scientific integrity. Even the scientists are supporting this 1.5 degrees C falsehood. So to me, this is absolutely unbelievable that they can keep on uh, doing this, saying this. The only, it, it, it's, a, it's a massive deception. The only reason for the deception is that it is being used to support more delay. So they're saying, don't worry. Yes, we decided, the scientific studies decided that 1.5 degrees C was the danger limit, and it's a disastrous danger limit at that, as was made very clear, and people soon realized after the 2018 IPCC 1.5 degree C report, which was the one in which um, there was a universal response and acknowledgement that we, the world, was, is in a climate emergency. 
But there's no emergency response whatsoever. Instead, we're being told that we can still limit to 1.5 degrees C. That's a delay again. And it means the continuing support of the fossil fuel industry and the continuation of 10 million fossil fuel air pollution deaths every year. 10 million fossil fuel specific air pollution deaths. What Bond did, uh, formally and internationally, was write the future off again. The truth is that we face global climate hell at 1.5 degrees C. Surely this is obvious. It was made obvious in the uh, six assessment reports of the IPCC. We are getting severe extreme weather events at an increasing rate affecting all habitable regions on the planet. And of course, as the AR6 said, these will increase. All of them. Heat waves, droughts, forest fires, superstorms, hurricanes and cyclones, torrential rains, floods. They're all committed to increase and the heat waves which we are experiencing unprecedented heat waves unprecedentedly early across the northern hemisphere the ipcc um, said even in its uh, fifth assessment 2014 that heat waves will increase in frequency in severity in intensity and they'll increase in the area being affected and they're now affecting huge areas i mean practically all of india was under an unprecedented heat wave and by the way that heat continues in india so back to uh, one of the media reports another quote and um they said to bridge the 1.5 degree C gap again, countries agreed to set up a work stream to accelerate action this decade. But the media report said, at the Bonn climate talks, no one can agree on what it should look like. 30 years of negotiations, of discussions, 30 years of IPCC, the climate change science reports and our leaders when they met in Bonn could not agree on what a work stream for climate action would look like. Criminal delay. Uh, carbon markets were discussed yet again. Uh, this time under the 2015 Paris Agreement, Article 6, but they're really a continuation of carbon market mechanisms like emissions trading that goes back to 1997 Kyoto Protocol. Um, an observer at the Bonn meeting um, said, we call them junk or zombie credits. These are largely worthless credits and now have the stamp of approval, which gives them more credibility and means they could, and they're being, used for greenwashing. The observer said in total, an estimated 320 million credits, equivalent to the annual emissions of 86 coal-fired power plants, have now been made available for nations to count towards their climate commitments. So remember, the IPCC said, and in fact, the IPCC chair, uh, Hossein Lee, said at the uh, Glasgow COP26 at the opening of the conference, he said that if global emissions are not put into immediate decline, both 2 degrees C as well as 1.5 degrees C, that they would both be out of reach. And here we are at the big bond meeting, two weeks of meetings, and uh, not a hint of putting emissions into decline. All the discussions and all the so-called agreements 
The agreements were disagreements. They were agreements to continue to do nothing. So all of the agreements result in the continued increase in emissions. Now, the refusal that's gone on for decades and decades and decades of the big economy countries to honor their financial obligations, their agreements and requirements that they specifically made under the 1992 Climate Convention is a long-standing source of distrust and delay, as was said by the one of the media reports. Now, in 2009, the rich countries had agreed to provide $200 billion a year to the most vulnerable underdeveloped countries by 2020. Here we are at 2022. They have failed to put together the first 200 billion. And um, most of the media reports, which of course were highly critical, most of the media reports uh, were astonished that at that bond, the bond meeting ended with nothing more done on this 200 billion a year commitment. And that commitment was agreed to start in 2020. And again, we're at 2022. I'm old enough to remember uh, the signing of the convention and the details of the convention. The developed country parties agreed in the 1992 convention under Article 4, Item 3, I quote, the developed country parties shall, shall provide new and additional financial resources to meet the agreed full costs incurred by the developing countries for their uh, commitments under the convention. They shall also be provided with financial resources, including the transfer of technologies needed by the developing countries and to meet their full incremental cost of implementing these measures. The implementation of these measures shall take into account, that is the financial and technological um, resources made available, shall take into account the need for adequacy, predictability of the flows of uh, the appropriate burden sharing of the country parties, which meant the developed countries agreed to um, provide all of these, uh, all manner of financial and technological requirements for the uh, most vulnerable de developing countries to be able to um, switch, convert uh, to clean renewable energy and not develop as they have been left to do on uh, fossil fuel energy, which they of course since have all been doing and also the finances available uh, for those countries um, to adapt to um, unavoidable impacts. And um, this is repeated over and over. So it was stated specifically that all manner of financial and technological provisions would be made available to the most vulnerable developing countries, all manner. And ever since 1992, the uh, high economy, large economy, developed countries have stalled. They've totally refused to do any of this. And so it has become a recurring source of uh, distrust and delay, as I quoted previously from the media. Um, this is why I for some years now have been calling uh, the situation with regards to the climate uh, conferences under the United Nations, why I have been calling the blocking, the refusal of taking any mitigation measures or helping the refusal to help the most vulnerable parties that are already being hit severely, of course, by ongoing uh, severe weather events. I've called this the crime of all time. And because the emissions are allowed, the fossil fuel emissions are allowed to increase, it's manifestly the greatest evil ever, ever imaginable. We're looking at the 
end of the human race and the end of the destruction of most life on this most glorious planet. Uh, still rich in life, yes, but, but nothing like the life that uh, I was born into and grew up into. Let me tell you, I have seen life recently collapse, disappear all around me. And this is reported by the science, insects, birds, and of course, we're in the sixth extinction because of our destructive, all-consuming economy. And that sixth extinction of species on Earth is accelerating, accelerating. So to another quote, the quote is from the BBC. Headline is, Bon talks end in acrimony over compensation. The uh, report here says two weeks of climate talks in Germany have ended in acrimony between rich and poor countries over cash for climate change damages. The issue is now called loss and damage, and it has become a running sore in these negotiations. So that's what I've seen in uh, conference after conference after conference. The refusal of the uh, rich and high emission countries to honor their commitments under the 1992 convention and to help and aid the most vulnerable and least developed countries, of course, is a block for any progress on the real negotiations to be made at all. So this is not only a horrible crime, $200 billion a year, it's, it's nothing to these wealthy countries, nothing. But what it is, it's a block to any progress on the vital, on the vital negotiations under the UN Climate Change Convention in order, as the IPCC has now told us in no uncertain terms, to get global emissions into decline immediately and rapidly. We are looking at more years of not doing that, of instead allowing fossil fuel industry to extract and burn more fossil fuels and the emissions continue to increase. Uh, the, um, uh, the report here says developing countries say they are reeling from climate change caused by the richer countries emissions over hundreds of years. They had hoped to get compensation. They had hoped to get it just onto the official agenda for the COP27 in November in Egypt. But here in Bonn, they couldn't get the United States and the European Union to agree. So the US and the EU blocked even putting loss and damage, even putting the help and aid on the agenda of the next COP. It's absolutely unbelievable. And so the, um, uh, from Climate Action Network International, um, that's an international group of hundreds of NGOs, uh, Mr. Hajit Singh said the EU specifically consistently blocked discussions for finance on loss and damage in Bonn. And he said the last two weeks exposed this hypocritical stance with major countries like Germany sourcing new fossil fuels abroad while delaying blocking support to developing countries that are facing devastation from climate-induced superstorms, rising seas, heat waves, etc. So good for the BBC. I mean, yes, there's a most horrid war going on, but we are in a situation in which we literally have to save ourselves from uh, exterminating ourselves by our own fossil fuel energy continued emissions. This is a survival imperative, and that's been recognized for many years now, that stopping global climate change, as well as uh, 
uh, climate disruption, as it should be called, as well as ocean disruption. Uh, remember, ocean acidification that comes directly from uh, fossil fuel CO2 emissions. So we're in a uh, survival imperative situation to put that right. Now, I was aware of Climate Home News that gives good reports, so I was able to access that. And uh, what they wrote was that China is opposing any references to major emitters in discussions about how to scale up carbon cutting efforts this decade at this interim climate talk in Bonn, Germany. Now, um, of course, China is a major emitter, it's the manufacturing base for the world, for the globalized economy. Its emissions are double uh, the emissions of the next highest emitter, which is the United States. So what happened, according to um, the uh, Climate Home News, was the United States proposed this work program to accelerate emission cuts and close the gap, the fictitious, ridiculous 1.5 degrees C gap, and uh, to adhere to climate goals to lead to, quote from the US, concrete actions by major emitters with capabilities. Well, I, I mean, this is so obvious, right? <laughs> if you're going to get emissions reducing, if you're going to put emissions into decline, obviously your biggest emitters are going to have to do it first, foremost, and most. So what happened was a group of countries, including China and India and the Arab group, they negotiate in groups here at these uh, conferences, objected to the language. And the language of major emitters was therefore deleted eventually. Um, this uh, media report goes on. Countries agreed at COP26 in Glasgow to, quote, to revisit and strengthen the 2030 targets this year. Now, these targets are voluntary national emissions targets. The UN calls them NDCs. And as they have been called by one long-standing climate expert, they are paltry targets. And everybody knows these targets are nothing close to uh, limiting the global warming to 2 degrees C, let alone 1.5 degrees C. They're not even close. Everybody knows that. The, um, uh, the IPCC AR6 says that um, we are on and this is most important, more important, of course, than the targets, so what are, is actually happening. The AR6 says the actual policies lead to a continuing increase in global emissions and a uh, totally catastrophic heating of 3.2 degrees C this century. What they agreed to, and apparently what the UN Climate Secretary had agreed to, is there won't even be a new national emissions accounting by the UN Climate Secretariat till 2023. More delay. Uh, so far, only Australia has promised deeper cuts. Brazil updated its climate change. Uh, Brazil updated its climate plan, but an accounting change means it is heading for higher emissions than it projected in 2015. So how is this possible? Well, these are voluntary targets. There's no commitments and uh, there's no agreement or specifications on how the countries will add up and work out and submit these targets. So different countries are using all kinds of different methodologies and um, uh, using um, and are coming up with all kinds of so-called uh, carbon benefits by which they uh, make their um, honoring of their targets uh, appear um, to be better than they actually are. So we've even got uh, confusion, disagreement and chaos on how the national emissions targets are uh, being accounted for and being um, registered with the UN Climate Secretariat. This is absolute madness. I mean, you read through the accounts of these meetings 
and you just can't believe it's true. These negotiators and countries and leaders are being absolutely ridiculous. And the conclusion is that they're being ridiculous, they're doing this because they're supporting the fossil fuel industry and they're supporting the continued increase in extraction and combustion of fossil fuel fuels for energy and continued emissions. Let there be no question if this is allowed to continue, our future is written off. If this is allowed to continue, our only future, the only future for humanity, as I say, it's hell at 1.5 degrees C um, by around 2030, and it'll get worse and worse and worse. And uh, civilization will collapse. We'll be back to uh, the Stone Age, but we won't be able to survive on the Stone Age. We will not survive nor will most life, if these unbelievably sky-high greenhouse gas, particularly CO2 emissions, are continued, are allowed to continue to increase at the accelerating rate, by the way, that they're currently increasing. But the United States and China, the, um, uh, the uh, number one, number two emitter, neither indicated at Bonn that they are likely to improve their current targets. So we're on what I call a global suicide scenario. I'm going to leave you to finish off with some uh, extracts from this report on the bond meeting that's just come out from the Financial Times and a similar headline, United Nations climate talks end in acrimony and accusations of betrayal. So um, it's the same story, same bad, bad Bond story, and I'll just leave you to go through that, and I'll say goodbye for now. Thank you for listening.